Um, so I'm Adam Gould, I'm Vice President of Sentinode Business at ARM. Um, so Sentinode was a company actually that ARM acquired uh, last summer. Uh, we were, uh, we've been supporting the, uh, the OMA at Sentinode for, uh, for uh, quite a while before that, and uh, we're going to be continuing to do that at ARM. Now, I think uh, Gary mentioned earlier that uh, the lightweight M to M standard. So, as he mentioned, uh, OMA has been doing device management for, for cell phones for a long time. And uh, maybe almost two years ago, there was, a, there was an effort to say, okay, well, now that's great. We've got connected, very powerful devices. But in the Internet of Things, that's all about very small, very inexpensive, low processing power, low memory kinds of devices. We need to, we need to come up with a new standard for that as well. And that's where, that's where the uh, lightweight M to M standard uh, came, up, came to rise. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a few minutes. Um, so maybe, first of all, just kind of what is, what is IoT? What is the problem we're trying to address? Well, first of all, the IoT, IoT is very disruptive. Um, you can see here that we're, we're expecting over the next few years that maybe, maybe half or, or maybe even more of the, of the solution in the IoT are, are, are for very new companies. And that's, that's where things like Raspberry Pi and Electric Imp and Ar Arduino all come into play because they're, 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 they're platforms that really enable these, these brand new companies to come up with new solutions, new, new designs. So last year, ARM shipped about 10 point, or ARM, sorry, ARM ecosystem partners shipped about 10.4 billion ARM cores. Above, of, of those, about 3 billion, 3.1 billion were Cortex-M. So Cortex-M is the lowest tier, uh, uh, the, the least expensive, high, most process, uh, sorry, uh, power consumption uh, efficient types of devices. So we, we, and that we've seen that growing. So that's about, say, 30% of last year's volume. is about 20% of the previous year's volume. But as the IoT grows, we're actually going to start seeing that, uh, that flip around, that it's those very tiny devices that really drive the, the growth of the, of the industry in terms of volume, from the volume perspective. So it's very important to, to make sure that these, these tiny, inexpensive, low-power devices get connected properly. Now, now the other thing that, that's... Uh, it's important uh, on this slide. So when I joined Sensinode about three and a half years ago, we were working on 8051 class, 8-bit processors, and I'm thinking to myself, my God, I've, uh, my career has been set back 30 years, right? And the, but the reason was that at the time, there was a belief, and, and it was true, that in order to get to the price points and the power consumption points that were, were needed in IoT, you had to use these very low capability types of devices. Well, fast forward only three and a half years from now, here we see a Freescale chip that's less than two millimeters on the side, costs less than 50 cents, and is still a 32-bit uh, ARM core. So we're, we're really seeing now that you can put some very good intelligence and have, still have low power and low cost types of devices. And again, we're talking about things that are are very low power consumption. Think about a watch battery that's driving this for, for months at a time possibly energy harvesting types of, types of applications where you have no power source at all. So th these are the kind, this is the kind of world that, uh, that we're, uh, we're sort of designing for and, 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 and actually even living in today. Okay, so lots of different numbers for IoT. You know, one of them is 50 billion devices by 2020, and I, I think that's a, that's a, uh, a fairly reasonable thing um, in the sense, you know, actually ARM uh, just is celebrating this week because there, we've just achieved the 50 billion shipped cores uh, um, uh, milestone. Now that took us 20 years, but just think that last year we shipped 10 billion, so getting to that next 50 billion is gonna be a hell of a lot faster than 20 years. So we're, we're seeing some real acceleration in, in this industry. So there's a huge opportunity, uh, lots of different examples. So consumer, home security is, is, has, been a, been, has been a big one along with home automation. This is something the cable companies, MSOs, have really been focused on. on. Elderly care, sort of aging in place types of applications um, have become really big. We do a lot of work on the enterprise side. Street lighting turns out to be a very interesting application. Um, there, about 12% of the United States' energy usage is, comes from streetlights, so there's, there's a real motivation to, to optimize those networks. 
and in general, this, the IoT is all about connecting things to applications, connecting multiple things to one application, connecting multiple things to many applications, connecting one thing to many applications. So all, all of those, all of those different, um, all, all those different models. So if you look at sort of the uh, high-level view of kind of the architecture of, of the Internet of Things. So on the left side, we have the, the endpoints, the nodes, these very tiny things. Those are the ones that we're connecting to the Internet, the cloud, the servers, et cetera, that, that, are, that are on the right side, possibly with a gateway in the middle, depending on the radio. So ARM talks a lot about the big data and little data, and, and, and you'll hear us say, big data comes from little, little data. So big data is the problem about how do you manage massive amounts of data. Well, in fact, the Internet of Things is what's creating that problem because so many different devices uh, reporting so many different small pieces of data is a, is a really big problem that, that has to be solved. So what we're trying to do generally in, in sort of the Sensinode side of, of ARM is connect those devices to, to the cloud, do it in a very secure way, very efficient way, and make sure that all the capabilities are discovered by the network and, and present that into kind of the big data solutions, the, the oracles, the SAPs, et cetera, that, that are doing the data analytics. The lightweight M2M is then a, a key element of that as well. So with a client that would sit on those nodes, and then the server side that we've actually implemented in our solution as well, that basically allows the device management part of, of, that, uh, of, of that system. So making sure that devices are, are bootstrapped with, their, with uh, security keys, with configuration parameters, that they're you know, properly authenticated in the network, um, that, uh, that we can do software updates over the air, et cetera, and again, doing it in a very e efficient manner. So it turns out we, we do say that big data starts with little data. So, uh, you know, again, looking at the growth of the Internet of Things, what we want it to do is this, right? We want to see that hockey stick ramp where there's open data, smart everything, lots of different sensor types of networks. What we really have to avoid, though, is this sort of flattening of the curve, which, which is a, a real possibility still. You know, the IoT, while there's a great opportunity, there's still plenty of work to be done. Now, what work is that? Well, first of all, to get that scale, you really need standards. To, as part of that standard, you, you have to have trust, meaning so the applications have to trust the data, and that's the devices, sorry, and the devices have to trust the applications. And that trust needs security, so you really have to have very secure communications between the, 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 between the endpoints. Okay, so a little bit of a techie picture here. So, uh, obviously, the, this is sort of a protocol stack of what would be the web today, where you might see thousands of bytes of overhead uh, in order to trans transmit your data. In, be in between that, you might have a, a, a backhaul or, or even some sign of highly connected devices where we've gone down and, and compressed some of these. So the, the big web objects that, that we use in the web have, been, have gone down to binary web objects. We're now using CoAP instead of HTTP, a much more efficient form of, of, uh, of communication. We're using UDP instead of TCP. We're, we're using DTLS instead of TLS. So basically much more efficient protocols that, that really provide a lot of optimization. Now going further into that thing, we now start adding, we now start replacing the IP layer and with a more efficient version of IP. That's, that's what the six low pan standard does. And then we layer on top of that, using those protocols, the lightweight M2M -M solution, which is, again, starts with that server all the way in the left side and goes to that very tiny thing all the way in the right side and does, does that uh, device management of that, of that thing in a very efficient way. So there's a lot of standards on, on this picture, but, but it, it a little bit comes from the fact that our, there are actually a, a wide variety of radios out there. And, and that's okay, you know, there's, there's going to be different radios that are chosen to connect these things, um, uh, and they're, they're different for good reasons. I mean, you know, things that Bluetooth smart, Bluetooth low energy, anything using a smartphone makes a lot of sense. Uh, something that uh, is a kind of mesh network kind of application, that's where kind of the Zigbee IP standards come into play. 
So there, there's a lot of good reasons for that. So there are a variety of standards. The key thing is, though, making sure that they can communicate with each other. So at the top layer, it's all about the application, making sure you have the data formats that are, that are commonly agreed. And that's where OMA is actually playing a really big role. So the OMA is, first of all, creating web objects specifically for device management, but is also supplying the community where web objects can be created for a variety of other types of, types of uses. And, and as a result, so the IPSO Alliance is actually creating some of those web objects around smart meters and lighting and that kind of stuff and publishing them back into the community. Then in the middle, we have the protocols. IETF, that's the place, the Internet Engineering Task Force, that's basically where all the, all the web protocols are developed and that's where, that's where everything we're doing here was, was developed as well. And then we have the, the, the various local networks with you know, Zigbee IP today and the Wi-Fi Alliance and, and moving forward we're seeing uh, Bluetooth Smart become IP enabled and we're seeing Zigbee moving to much more efficient IP based communications for both sub gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz communication. So some of the benefits of a lightweight M2M. -M. So first of all, it's, it's about moving away from those silos. So what, what that means is most of M2M -M in the past, and when we think of M2M, -M, we sort of think of this legacy model where you've developed a device, you've developed the application along with it, and really is, there's a one-to-one -one relationship between those, those devices and that, those applications or services. Going forward, that's, that's not the way of the future. We're, we're really seeing inside of ARM, Hardware, uh, the hard rise of the hardware app. So what does that mean? That means that the, the, the hardware, the, the device is being developed and somebody else, and generating data, and somebody else is gonna then offer you services. So an example might be, you take a, take a Fitbit generating you know, your activity data. So today, yeah, that's basically just for your own use, but you might wanna have that data go to your personal trainer to give you a fitness program to your insurance company to lower your, your, your insurance rates, to your doctor to monitor yourself after surgery. All of those are separate services that the Fitbit actually didn't even know that it was is connecting to. And that's a, a, one of the real powerful things of, of uh, lightweight m It's about device management without having to have those two things um, connected together. So the next piece is it's really applicable to all of IoT. So in the past, device management was really focused on high-end cellular connected devices, right? So now, and in fact, sensor networking never had any sort of standard for device management at all. Everybody was doing their own thing. Well, and so while OMA was probably original, originally thinking of cellular connected devices, we're actually now gonna see the OMA light light standard use, used for non-cellular connections as well. And then it's all about interoperability between the, the services and the management layer. So if you want to learn more, there is a white paper that was, uh, was co-authored for the industry. Um, Arm, Ericsson, Vodafone all contributed to that. Uh, that is not available in this community. So, so th this is, this, the full URL is not here, but, uh, but we will be uh, updating this presentation. So when you get access to it later, there'll be a real URL to click. So I encourage you to uh, go and check out that well, white paper. I, I think they all did a great job. And that's it. Thank you very much.